down to me, Larry? Why, well, of course I did. Oh, goody, goody. I hope I win. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Blue Boy seems to be having trouble at the post. Cassidy can't seem to get them lined up. May I? Why, what's the matter? Why are you staring at that young man? He's awfully good looking. You're not the only one who thinks so, Mary. Oh, I imagine he's quite a lady killer. Larry Sturgis is a most notorious young rascal. But he's still good looking. He drinks too much. He has a nice smile. He gambles prodigiously and runs around with chorus girls. Oh, then he isn't married. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's a licentious rake. Oh, dear. Why is it all interesting men are like that? Because they're men. They're all! <laughs> I'll take that best now. No, you blue boy, will you buy me a mink coat? Maybe I'll buy you anything. twice in a row, pal. Oh, come on, Larry. Don't be a piker. Do it for Maisie Wazy. How much? Five dollars. I'll take it. He's going to ride his own horse. It's the most dangerous people chase course in the country. Maybe he'll break his neck. Come on, Larry, show them how nice you look in your silk. Oh, quit it, Maisie. Look at that. Oh, be still, my fluttering heart. Oh. Mary. Teddy's got nice legs. <laughs> oh, Maisie, behave yourself. Oh, I gotta go down to the paddock. Good luck. So long, Larry. We're all for you. Thanks. Don't fall off your horse, darling. Good luck. Thank you. The idea of speaking to that young man when you've never met him. Who is the girl? Oh, that's little Mary of the Vernon Million. Looks like you have opposition. Is that so? I've got Larry Sturgis hook and how. Yeah. I'm going down to the car. Why? I can see better there. Be to dance at the race. But Mary!
he'll be all right. Don't worry. You don't hold up his head. I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I'm sure it isn't. Where does it hurt most? Right here. Maybe something very serious. I don't think I'll ever get over it. We'll be at the hospital in a jiffy. Tell him not to drive so fast. Slower. Are you comfortable? Would you move your arm a little higher? Is that better? That's grand. If I die now, it doesn't matter. Confounded scandal sheets, they ought to be suppressed. Yes, sir. You're tired of very bad for going to church. What time is it? I was thinking about quarter of noon time, sir. Why don't you wake me earlier? Oh, I try, but no can do. You have big night with honorable bachelor dinner. Mm -hmm. You having big head like a giant this morning. That's so. When I try waking you up, you're hitting me with big pillow feather. Forget it. Hello, Maisie. Haven't seen much of you lately. Oh, I'm sorry. I've uh, been very busy, you know. Too busy to see me, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, Maisie, I... Yeah, I know. I just read the paper. Now, see here, Maisie. It's all over between us. I told you that. You don't get rid of me that easy. You'll talk to me or I'll talk to the newspaper. All right. What do you want? What do you think I want? You've taken me places. You've promised me things. You've made me the laughing stock of this town. It's up to you, Larry, darling. Hmm. Mark my words, you're going to be sorry. I'm the best judge of that. It isn't too late to change your mind even now. But I don't want to change my mind. I love him. You're a foolish girl. There have been a dozen women in his life. He told me about them. I've done everything I could to prevent this marriage, because I love you. He loves me, too. Well, it's after 12. Everything is ready. Shall I tell the office to start? Where is Mr. Sturgis? Why, isn't he here? Not unless your eyesight's better than mine. Well, it is difficult to rehearse without a bridegroom. It's practically impossible. I'll phone him. Well? My press agent says he can sell my life story to the Sunday papers. I'll break the front page the night before your wedding. Help yourself. Thank you. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Vernon. Yes. No? Mr. Sturgis, he's very busy. I think maybe he upsetting elephant and have apricot on hand. Oh, I tell him you waiting at church. You wait? Oh, he wait. No? <laughs> oh, he not having hangover. Goodbye. Did I have a promise to marry you? Why, of course you did. That's what hurts. Why, even in your letters. My lawyer wants me to sue for $100,000, but I'm not too hard-hearted. 
I don't want to interfere with your happiness. No, of course not. You know, I was just thinking of making you a present of $50,000. Why, Larry, darling. Would that make you any happier? Why, of course. <laughs> Where are those letters? My lawyer has them. Well, you get your lawyer over here with those letters. Max, come in now. How do you do, Mr. Sturgis? I hope we haven't inconvenienced you. Not much. So these are the letters, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. I didn't think you were clever enough, Maisie, to work this out by yourself. Sorry, Larry. Ladies must live. I'm sorry, madam. There is another service at once, and we can't wait any longer. Come, dear. Just a moment more. Perhaps something's happened to him. It's very distressing. Distressing? It's mortifying. Come, dear. Larry! So you thought you could get away by busting into a church, but you didn't get away with it, me lad. What is it, Larry? Oh, I had a traffic accident and ran into someone. Officer, we're going to be married. I mean, well, uh, marry him if you want to, but I know where he's going to spend his honey. Listen, let me explain. Go ahead, explain. I'll wait, but you'll tell it to the judge. Hurry, hurry, there's just time. Well, go ahead, but I'll go with... Hey, wait a minute. What kind of a church is this? Oh, it's a Protestant church. Oh, uh, I'll wait outside. Oh, I'm uh, sorry I'm late. You're sorry. You would have an accident. We might have expected that. Happy? Mm-hmm. Well, read these and see how you feel. Nice handwriting. But I wanted you to read them. I want you to know everything. I'm not interested in those. All I'm interested in is keeping you on my side until after we're married. And after that? You'll find out. Oh. Just think, tomorrow night we'll be on the Mauritania. The Nice, the Riviera, Monte Carlo. You love it there. I've always wanted to go. Do you know anything about roulette? Not much. We have a wheel right here. Here? Uh huh. Come on. I'll show you. Good evening, Mr. Sturgis. Hello, Bren. He's one of the biggest gamblers in town. He seems to know you rather well. You should. I've been a customer here for years. Do you ever win? Not very often, but I feel lucky tonight. Because you're with me. All down. Oh, hello, Gumby. You're not closing me up again tonight. I want to talk to you. In your office. Number four. Well. Here we are here to play. That's it. Uh, thank you. Matter, you broke. Wait a minute. We have a drink here? No, thanks. Uh, bring me my favorite. Number nine. Nine. How's the game tonight? Five. How's the game? Brandon? Comes a time when the police need help. Well, when the best man in the department comes to a lawbreaker for assistance, it must be an emergency. Did you read in the paper about the killing of that bank messenger this afternoon? Yes, terrible thing. Yeah. The killer got away with 50 grand. With 
found his hideout, but missed him by minutes. I picked this up in his apartment. What do you make of it? Place 7, 14, 28, and 29. It looks like a roulette system. Exactly. Oh, you keep it. The man that killed that messenger was a gambler. Do you know anybody that plays that combination? No. Well, the stolen money was mostly new $20 bills. Here's the serial number. Watch out for that stolen money. If you see anybody play that 7, 14, 28, and 29, you know what to do. Sure. So long. So long, Gary. I think you'd better come into my table, Mr. Brandon. Well, what's it doing? Young Sturgis taking the wheel for a ride. So what? Well, he's in the bank for over nine grand now, and I thought you might want to know. Thirteen repeats. <laughs> Blank. Oh, I didn't think he'd win on that again. That's an old habit of mine. That's thirteen's come up three times in five minutes. Well, I wish yeah. I had his luck. Yeah, maybe you don't live right. <laughs> All bets down. Let him ride. Hey, you are where you been. Give me another one just like that. You mind, honey? Must you? Just that one. Darling, don't you think we'd better be leaving? Please? Oh, it's the shank of the evening. I'm just getting started. You seem to have done pretty well for yourself, Mr. Thirteen Sturgis. repeats. Oh, Blank. Oh, Even. Oh, I'll say it's just all getting started. I think you've got enough. I don't. You'd better cash in. What do you mean? I can't play anymore? Well, not tonight. Oh, you think I'm lit, huh? Well, aren't you? All right, I'll quit. But I won't play here anymore. Oh, I'm sorry if you feel that way about it. Well, I do. It's eleven thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, well, I'll give you a check for it. No check. I paid with cash, and I want to be paid with cash. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't allow you to leave here in your condition with that much cash. I try to protect my customers. Uh, you. Oh, Larry, please. All right, honey. Give me a check. Drop into the office on your way out, and I'll give it to you. Thanks for the contribution. Oh, oh maybe Back I can down. Have His luck. Lose, I suppose, sir. And eleven thousand bucks. All now? Anything wrong with that money? No. Not a thing. I didn't know you liked gambling so much. Oh, I've lost a lot of money to Brenton. No, there's certain satisfaction getting some of it back. But if you don't want me to gamble... I don't. Well, I won't. Uh. Oh, tomorrow's an important day. The biggest day in my life. Hey. Get these coats, will you? Honey, you'll be all right. I'm going to go get that check. You wait here. See the way Brandon was looking at that money? Yes. He knows something. You were a fool to come here. Well, I'll take care of Brandon. Someone's coming. Well, get out of here. Wait for me in the car. Hello, Gunby. This is Brandon. You'd better get over here as quickly as you can. Come in. Is my check ready? Yes, I have a good wheel. You better leave here right away. There's going to be trouble here. Trouble? Yes, there's a murderer in this place. Sitting here, somebody shot him. Well, there was no one here but you and Mr. Brandon. Yes, and you still got the gun in your hand. Somebody better call the police. Yeah. Yeah, somebody better call the police. What's the number? Spring 3100.
Why did you kill him? That's the hundredth time you've asked me that. Well, why did you? I didn't. Where'd you get the gun? I picked it up off the floor. I never saw it before. You had the gun in your hand when the people came in and saw you standing over Brandon? I told you I picked it up after the shot was fired. Well, why did you pick it up? I don't know. For five hours, you've been asking me these same questions. I'm getting fed up. You don't have to answer our questions if you don't care to, Mrs. Treasures. What reason would I have for killing a man like Brandon? That's what we'd like to find out. You won $11,000 from him, didn't you? Yes, but when you went to his office, he refused to pay you and you quarreled. There was never any question as to his paying me. You just made out the check when... Oh, but I've answered all these questions before. You're trying to put words in my mouth. Wait a minute, son, wait a minute. We're as tired of this as you are. Give us a low down, we'll try and make it as easy for you as we can. That'll be all, boys. Wait outside. Can I get out of here for a minute? Sure. Thanks. Have a cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Never thought anything would get me like this. Sorry to have to put you through this. It's a matter of routine. Well, you seem quite human about it anyway. All well, cops are human, but they have duties to perform. Now, Mr. Sturgis, can't you remember anything that happened which might help me? Well, I'm a bit confused about the whole thing. But I seem to remember that Brandon wanted me out of there. He said something about a murderer being there. Is that all? Well, that's all I can clearly remember. It's not much of a defense. Well, surely you don't, uh, you... You were drinking. Yes. And you were gambling. Yes. A man was killed. It looks as though you might have done it. Now, a smart prosecutor will make a good case of it. I've seen men go to the chair on less evidence. It doesn't seem possible anything like this could happen to me. No, I'm not thinking of myself so much, but... Hello. Mr. Vernon, you want to speak to her? Yes. Let her come in. It's a bit unusual, but I'm sorry for the young woman. I'll let you talk to her for five minutes. I appreciate that. Larry. No, let her be in Go in there if you wish. All right. Thank you. Pick up that bird that ran the roulette wheel for Brandon? No. Looks like he grabbed the dough and scrammed. Well, keep after him. Get him. Bring him in. Now, keep your chin up, dear. Things will straighten themselves out. Only... Only today will still have been our wedding day. It isn't much like we thought it would be, is it? Oh, there must be something I can do. There is. I want you to stay out of this. I'll get the finest criminal lawyer money can buy. And when I'm through, I'll never gamble again. You promise? I promise. Sorry. Time's up. You don't think they'll convict him, do you? I'm going to do everything I can to help him. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all you've tried to do for me. Oh, I haven't given up your case yet. Someday I'll get the man that played those numbers. That's a pretty slim clue. I know it is. But he's got a bankroll and he'll play. He's smart and cunning, but he can't give up roulette. My hunch is that he'll go to Nice or Monte Carlo. The biggest roulette games in the world. Inspector, we've got to get going to catch that train. Bye.
You got the meat to that, I got the fire. Hold up game, huh? Thanks. Hey, are these necessary? Sorry, Sturgis. Can't make exception. Object to my company, eh? Well, I may have been hooked up with worse. <laughs> but I don't know when. We finally picked this guy up, Inspector. Well, we've been looking for you for a long time. I didn't take the money, I was... We'll take care of that later. I want to know who killed Brandon. I don't know. I was at the wheel when it happened. Oh. Did you see anyone play that combination that night? Yeah. Who was it? I don't know. Now, come across. But I tell you, the guy's a killer. I don't want to get bumped off. That's the reason I was hiding out. What's his name? What's his name? Jim Daggett. Hello, Al. See what you can get on a guy named James Daggett and call me back. Yeah. Better yet, if you have anything, come up. You got a lot to learn. I sure was going to get a lot of razzing up the big house. They don't like you fancy cake eaters up there. Now, if you stick with me, I'll get you in with the right crowd. I got social standing. Ah, uh, you're talking too much, but that's all right. It's a good company. Yeah? I use my influence to get you a room with a southern exposure. City for mail robbery. Wanted in Galveston for express holdup. Reward of $5,000. Never been apprehended, photographed, or fingerprinted. Travels with a pretty girl known as Blondie Roberts. This fellow will give you a description. Take him down. I want you to cover all railroads, bus lines, and outgoing steamships. Once we get Daggett, I'll clear young Sturgis. Give me the VA. Coming to the bridge now. You better take your last look. Yeah. You better take a last look. Come on, kid. Come on, kid. Come on. I hit something, kid. What? Come over in. Pull him in. Come on. That is boy. Pull him on. Come on. Yeah. I must have hit something. What's the matter? Oh. The leg. The leg. That one? 
Start working on those bracelets. I can't make it, kid, but you can. I'll ditch the cuffs and I'll tell him you drowned. My dear, if you'd only cry, it would do you good. You mustn't let this ruin your life. If you'd married him, you'd never have been happy. You have no right to say that. Larry's father died, a young man, because of liquor and women. Larry was weak, charming, lovable. Perhaps it wasn't his fault. It was inherited. Suppose children had come from your marriage. Suppose they'd inherited Larry's nature. Then what? You'd never have known a moment free from care and worry. Stop it, I'll never, I'll never believe that, never. Oh, I'm sorry if I've hurt you. And I'll never stop loving Larry. Oh, my dear. Because I love you, I can say this. That for your sake, it's better that Larry's passed out of your life. Oh, I'll never. Please go away. You tell him that Miss Brennan wants to see him the first thing in the morning. Sorry for you. Why? You seem so lonesome. You have been three months in Monte Carlo, yet you speak to no one except me. You come to the casino, yet you do not play. You always seem to be looking for someone you do not find. You've been a good little friend, Madeline. We could be better friends, Monsieur. I like you very much, and you've been so good to me. And yet, each night, 
You leave me and go home alone. I know you well enough right now. You can't deceive me, monsieur. There is another girl. Some girl back in that America whom you love. Is that so? <laughs> you see, Madeline knows. Sometimes you speak to me, but always you are thinking of her. Perhaps. She must be very lovely. She is very lovely. Suppose we drink a little toast to the lady who you love, wherever she is. <laughs> huh? All right. <laughs> from the prefect of police. They have a line on this woman called Blondie. So Dagger can't be far off. I don't think we made a mistake in coming here after all. I'll never give up. All I care about is clearing Larry's name. Where is your aunt? I left her at the hotel. She was tired after the trip. Perhaps you'd better get some rest, too. Hmm? I'd like to stay here. You know, this is where Larry and I were going to spend our honeymoon. I understand. Do you mind if I leave you for a while? I'll be at the casino if you need me. There comes Walter Napoleon. I don't like that fixed smile on his face. That smile is a very bad sign. Uh -huh. Ah, good morning, my dear monsieur. Good morning, Marquis. At my charming days. <laughs> you look thirsty. I am. Oh, shut roll. Thank you. Help yourself. <laughs> Do you know I did a very foolish thing this morning? Here it comes. I kept away from my villa with empty pockets. Have you such a thing as a meal, Madelon? Am I the sort of girl who goes about carrying thousand francs in her purse? No, you are not. But since I am desolate of money, Perhaps monsieur will be kind enough to loan me some for a few hours. If he does, you can kiss him goodbye. How much did you lose this morning? Very little. I hope to win enough to repay you what you loaned me yesterday. I have fixed upon a table where it seems my luck has definitely established itself. What kind of luck do you usually? <laughs> oh, thank you, monsieur. I shall repay you within the hour. Adieu, adieu. That seems to have quite a hold on your uncle. He broke the bank once. He was famous for a day. He can never forget it. If we hadn't met you, you can imagine what would have become of us. You have been so good to us. Perhaps the next man will not be like that. Come on, let's get out of here. I've got to hide someplace. My room. Come on. Monsieur, what is the matter? And who is this 
man you're afraid of. He's a detective from America. A detective? Yes, here to take me back for a crime I didn't commit. That's why I'm here at the casino. The only clue I have is numbers. Numbers? Yes, a system on a roulette. Larry isn't there. I know. I just saw him. Where'd he go? Upstairs. Why didn't you tell me? I would have watched for those numbers. You stay here. I'll go down and see if you follow this. American officer wants. Mary, come, monsieur. No, no. Thanks for your loyalty, madam. I'm on off to the place. So, you're the woman he loves. You don't need to reply. I saw it in his face when he looked at you just now. Let me go. Not until you hear what I have to say. Love. You don't even know its meaning. If you love him, you would not let him take him away. You would fight for him. If he loved me, I would not hand him over to the police, no matter what he had done. You do not deserve the love of a man like that. No, you may go. You didn't fool me for a minute. I knew you weren't dead. And Mary? I didn't tell her my suspicions. But down in her heart, I guess she hoped. She hoped so much she couldn't wait to turn me over to the police. She had the good sense to obey my orders. Now the time is short. I came here to get the man that killed Brandon. But he got me instead. Would you like to wear my shoes? Would I? Would you give me that chance? You heard, Captain? Oui, monsieur. Get those papers. It's your warrant and extradition papers for James Daggett. You must get Daggett tonight before he gets a chance to get away. Pick up his companion, Blondie Roberts, and you'll get him. Remember, he's dangerous. Take my gun and badge. Good luck. Thanks. Madeline, the American officer is my best friend. Come, monsieur, there is no time to lose. Let's go. Don't come in unless I whistle. Good luck with you.
Grand Noir. I knew Twenty would win that time. But why didn't you bet on it? Alas, madam, I very foolishly kept away from my villa without my wallet. Now, isn't that too bad? Permit me to introduce myself. I am the Marquis Napoleon de Savoie. Marquis? Napoleon? Oh, fancy meeting one of the Napoleons here. You know, I'd like to learn this game. It looks so fascinating with all those pretty little ships. It is the game of kings. Do you think you could teach me? It would be a pleasure, madame. You are not playing, would you mind? Oh, no, no. If this is a stick-up, you've come to the wrong place. I've just taken over Gunby's job. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sit down. Where's Daggett? I don't know. And if I did, can you see me telling you? You save yourself a lot of trouble. If I tell, he'll kill me. I'll take care of that. I've seen you somewhere before. Who are you? My name is Sturgis. Why, well, I've read about you. I've seen your pictures in the papers. Why, why, you're... Dead? Not too dead to get Daggett. He did kill Brandon, didn't he? So what if he did? Just because I got mixed up with a criminal doesn't make me one. A reward of $5,000. You want it? They'll give him a chair. He deserves it. I'm no stool pigeon. Five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Keep you for a long time. And he'll be where he can't harm you. I've never done a dirty trick like that. It's your one chance to square yourself with the police. I'll guarantee you'll get off scot-free. Have you got the money in cash? Five thousand dollars in American money is yours when I take him in custody. Are you ready to take him now? Yes. He has some papers or money or something somewhere in this room that he wouldn't even trust me to bring to him. He sent me on ahead to see if the coast was clear. If I call him, he'll be here in a few minutes. Call him. If you make a mess of this, you know, it'll mean both of us. You know how sure he is with that gun. If he thinks there's anyone here, he'll come in the door shooting. Call him. It's all clear, Jim. Come on over. You'll be here in a few minutes. I saw him with that woman in his arms. The first thing a detective learns is not to jump at conclusions. But if he loved me, he'd never let me go on believing him dead. And if you loved him, you'd give him a chance to explain. Oh, Blondie. All right, stick him up. Up. Keep him up there. I'll let you have it like you gave it to Gundy. And Brandon. Arrest them. All right, let me have them back here. Get in there. Where's Blondie? I'm sorry, Jim. What did you do? Get paid for double crossing me? I couldn't help it. It was either you or me, and you'd have gotten it anyhow. Well, you little. Back there. there he is. Good work, Monsieur Sturgis. 
And we have the woman, too. I'm sorry, I promised to let her go. You are making a mistake, monsieur. I'll take care of that. Come on. Well, that's that. Are you sure he'll get the chair? Dead sure. Goodbye. Thank you. full of mistrust. Right now, he's trying to prove himself for you. Hello. Yes, Larry. Good work, boy. He's got baggage. Then my part's finished. If he has anything to say, he'll come to me. Where are you going? Now, don't do anything hasty. Incredible. Madame had no right to win. She should have back my number. But you lost. Yes, the bet is part of my system. I will win this time. Now let me play for you, please, on number seven. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like 17. I like this uh, pretty green number over here where the little donuts are. Oh, Madame will lose. Rien va plus, Madame. Madame cannot win. The double zero. The maison gagne. Incredible. Marvelous. Terrific. But only Madame has no system. Now let me show you. I don't know much about this game. Couldn't have done it better myself. The woman admitted that Daggett had killed Brandon. What did you do with her? Well, I let her go. Why? Well, I, I made a bargain with her. Well, what good is her confession if you didn't hold her as a witness? Oh. Unless you get that woman, we're no better off than we were. So I answer? Hello? You sure? Wait. Don't go without the police. Le double zero. The American lady has broke the bank. And she knows nothing about the game. She has no system. Napoleon. All I know is that this game is your water. I've been looking for you everywhere. Look what I've got. I want to talk to you. Mary, I just broke the bank. Aunt Emma, please, let's get out of here. Why? I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. What is it? I can't tell you here. Wait till I get the money for these. Let me help you to carry them. I wouldn't think of inconveniencing you. What do I go for this? Right over there.
me from the casino. That's why I was with her all the time. She doesn't believe me. Uh-uh. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> but the man you arrested... Was Blondie's brother, the decoy. So she could go to Daggett, and they make their getaway. <laughs> I kind of slipped up a little bit there, eh, Chief? Not as much as you think. When Daggett confessed, he implicated Blondie's brother in the killing of that bank messenger. See, you kill two birds with one stone. So I stand a chance of a permanent job. Any time you want. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> well, uh, do I have to go back? Not unless you care to. We always wanted to spend our honeymoon in Monte Carlo, didn't we? <laughs> 